Hey everyone, my name is Ksenia and today my guest is Ron Corvus who's gonna have a match for the hardcore title tonight at IWF Ninja Zone. As I said, tonight you're having a match for the uh, PWM hardcore title yes. against Vladimir Kokov. It's like a rematch because he stole yeah. my title from me in, in, back in Budapest, yeah. back in April. And is it your first time wrestling in Moscow or not? No, it's the second time. And third time in Russia. First time I was in St. Petersburg. Okay. Do you like it better here or in St. Petersburg? No, it, both places was really cool. The fans are cool, everything. So I like to come here, you know. It's awesome. I mean, it's good for us because people enjoy seeing you perform. Thank you. So let's talk about hardcore a little bit since you're having a hardcore match tonight. Yes. Um, I feel like it's been kind of a discussed topic recently with more of it getting TV coverage and stuff like that. What made you decide to start doing hardcore matches? Or was it just a thing that kind of took you by storm and just... Like you said, it took, took me by storm, you know. They just put me a couple of times in hardcore matches and I was successful. I was just enjoy it, you know. I was beating up the guys, using everything. I like putting people through tables and beating them with everybody, you know. So I just enjoy it. And that's it. And I think I became one of the best hardcore guys in Europe, you know. You can check the death match with Dover only on boards, you know. It was one of my best hardcore matches. Even I lost that match, but that was a hell of a match. And do you feel like hardcore wrestling should be perceived as a completely separate genre of wrestling? Uh, I think every wrestling show, you know, they, they should just give the people what, what they need. They need, you know, technical wrestling, they need some comedy. But uh, there are some fans who love hardcore wrestling, so they should get that too. Okay, so I might be wrong, <laughs> but... I feel like when we're talking about hardcore wrestling, or when someone mentions hardcore wrestling in a conversation, you think um, Japan and you think America. Yeah. Uh, but we don't really think Europe. But as far as I know, you've trained in America, right? Yes. Was it um, a deciding factor in you dabbling into hardcore wrestling? No, no. no. That, that had nothing to do with it. You know, I trained with the Wild Someone, with the Alpha the Wild Someone, and there was nothing hardcore about it. But when I uh, returned back home to Hungary, like I said, they just put me in a match, a couple mm -hmm. hardcore matches, and I was successful. And do you feel like uh, hardcore wrestling in Europe is something that's right now on par with American hardcore wrestling, or is there still a way to make it? Not really, you know, not, not many promotions in Europe making hardcore matches anymore because everybody wants to get, you know, into the bigger scenes like mm -hmm. NXT UK or here and, or there and so they, they don't like hardcore stuff, you know, and the people, the wrestlers, they usually just want to, if they want to get there, they have to wrestle regular matches, you know, not, not hardcore stuff. Another thing that I ask wrestlers who like hardcore wrestling yes. is well, actually, some people have corrected me, and some people say that in Japan, hardcore wrestling is mainstream, which is arguable. <laughs> but um, do you feel like hardcore wrestling could be mainstream in America or in Europe or anywhere? Could it be broadcast on TV? Could it be something big? Uh, I'm not sure about this. No? I'm not sure about this. That that stuff is not really for TV, you know, especially if. If the TV program is, you know, the kids can watch, mm -hmm. so it depends. There are some levels of hardcore wrestling. Yeah. Some stuff can be shown on TV, but some is just too much probably for TV. But would you like it to happen? Uh, at, at some level, like I said. Mm -hmm. For some levels are not for kids, you know. And another question that is arguable. Um, do you feel like there is a line between classic hardcore wrestling, hardcore wrestling, ultra violence, or is it just situational because some people like to separate hardcore wrestling and ultra violence into like two completely different categories. Yeah, it, it would be separated. Yeah. It should be separated, yes. And where's the line? What determines an ultra violence match and not a hardcore match? It depends on blood, it depends on the weapons the wrestlers using, you know. Tables, ladders, candlesticks, some stuff are even okay for TV, but the other stuff like light tubes or, or mm -hmm. razor blades or 
Thumbtacks is not that bad, but the other stuff I just mentioned, they, they are too much for TV, I think. Is there a weapon that you would never agree to be used on you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> there, there was not too many weapons that, that I said don't use it, you know. I had thumbtacks, light tubes, I had fire, I even had some weird weapon. It was, it was sticking on the boards, but I, I don't know how, how was the name. It was almost like nails full of it, and I took a bump on it. Whoa. I had one hour when they told me, okay, this will be the finish. And I had one hour, I, I said, okay, give me a minute, let's do it. <sighs> so I did the two. Maybe the barbed wire, you know, if it's really thick and everything, maybe that's too much. Because that's ripping your, your skin. This nail thing, was it the most unusual weapon that's been used? Yes, that was only used once in Hungary and that was only, <laughs> I think that was the only death match on the boards in whole Europe. Mm -hmm. So that was probably the that's only thing. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that's also very talked about in the community, it's been talked about recently, um, is the health concerns. Well, yeah. obvious health concerns are injuries, but yeah. other things are, for example, light tubes, they're poisonous, like they yes. say mercury. Um, and do you think that there should be certain rules on like how to use them or like where you can use them or is it just that you as wrestlers and we as fans just take that risk and just run with it? I like using uh, the light tubes, it looks good, it sounds good mm -hmm. and uh, they cut you very ma many 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 places you know so it, it, the match looks good with it but uh, I also know the guess mm -hmm. what comes from it and I one time I read uh, what Tommy Dreamer was writing and probably Instagram that we, we all should stop the light tubes because of the poison and stuff so I, I agree with him. It's maybe a couple of times sometimes you know a few, few light tubes but it's not good for us. And also on the topic of health, do you think that it's a feasible near future reality that um, it could become a requirement for wrestlers or hardcore wrestlers in particular to be like say tested before the matches or to like, bring a paper that says like that they are healthy. Uh, you matches. mean like they have uh, hepatitis or yeah, anything? Yeah, because we're yes, dealing with a lot yes, of blood we, there. <laughs> yes, we should be tested all the time. Actually in Hungary we was tested a couple mm -hmm. of times, you know. And That's good to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because in America there's been several, well not scandals, but instances where yes. there were questions. Yes. That should be yeah, necessary. Do, do you feel like uh, it's the responsibility of the world of wrestling on the whole to take care of the health of hardcore wrestlers? Independent wrestler, wrestling organization should just take care of it and just ask the wrestler mm -hmm. go to the doctor before the show, take the test and bring it with you. And that's how it should work, you know. Okay, we've come into a little bit of a sad topic. <laughs> um, so let's wrap up with a question that I ask, well, virtually everyone, which is a bit cliche, but I like this question because it kind of lets me into your mindset a little bit. Uh, you obviously travel the world, you've performed in many places, and you are here right now in Russia. Yes. And is there a place, a city, or a venue that's on your bucket list and that you would love to perform at one day? Well, you know, I'll be. 45 in January, so there is not much I can do. I mean, there are some places I'm sure I cannot go, like a WWE, I'm too old for them. But uh, I would still love to go to Japan for some matches, few matches, even hardcore matches, mm -hmm. or in Asia, you know. Uh, I've wrestled in 14 countries in Europe, and, and including uh, Russia and other places. I was in Jordan, I'm going to Israel this year. In the US I only trained, mm -hmm. you know, after the training, because of I had some visa issues, I couldn't mm -hmm. return. So I hope the time expired after 11 years so I can return to the US and have some matches there and, and that's it, you know. Okay, I hope that happens. And in the meanwhile, thank we're you. going to enjoy your match tonight. Thank you. And thank you for being here. Thank you very much. And thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a like if you had a good time. Subscribe, follow on his social media. I will put the links in the description down below. And goodbye! Bye. Готово? Готово. Готово.